Now, only five countries in Africa are yet to report a confirmed case of coronavirus, but many countries in West Africa have recorded cases of COVID-19. Joining me via Skype is the Director General of West Africa Health Organization, Professor Stanley Okolo, to discuss the fight against the pandemic in the region. Uh, thank you for joining us on TV News. Uh, there's this race to flatten the curve of the pandemic, but then it looks like the curve is not flattening, rather it's heightening. This is worrisome, isn't it? Well, as you know, we had the first case of coronavirus in our region, 27th of February in Nigeria. And since then, we have seen the cases continue to increase. Yes, of course, all our 15 countries have now reported cases of coronavirus. And Africa is no different from what is happening across the world. This pandemic and this virus will increase, and that is the place we are in now. And most of the things that will help to contain it and will help to stop it spreading are those measures that are being undertaken. And therefore, it's not a one way street. It is a street that you have the measures that are being undertaken by health professionals and government and what the public citizens themselves should do. The public has a role in this also. So, yes, we can see that the curve is increasing, but that is not to say that. Everything is not being done at the moment across our countries, but there are some areas where we have to reinforce some things, and there are some areas where we have to take more draconian action than is being taken at the moment. There is this uh, lingering fear that uh, the Western countries, where it's been touted that they have enough uh, medical facilities, and Africa, let's say more than 6,200 uh, cases have been recorded, and five countries in Africa have not recorded this case. Do we have the wherewithal to tackle this scourge? As when you had me on this uh, channel about two or three weeks ago, I did say to you that the issues of challenges we'll have is not whether we are prepared with everything that we can do, but it's the issues of infrastructure and if we are in this for the longer term. And that is why you can now see that some countries, particularly countries across West Africa, are developing contingency plans. In Nigeria, I listened to the uh, minister the other day talking about this um, um, facility that has now been created in Abuja for quarantining people and isolating people. All those are in place. The areas where there are challenges are, for example, in having enough ventilators within intensive care units for those who are severely ill. Those are challenges that are at the moment being tackled through some of the procurement channels that have become open following the end of the pandemic in China. Well, the shock is being felt everywhere, also in different organizations. For instance, your own organization, you've just um, mentioned some things you've done, West Africa Health Organization. And if you also look at the ECOWAS, you, you feel the, the, the impact on the economy, etc. Uh, what is the exit strategy that is being put in place to ensure that at the end of the day we get out of it and we are not uh, really feeling it that much? In terms of economy, I'm not uh, qualified to tell you about what the economic uh, uh, plans are for ECOWAS. We do have a commissioner for macroeconomics. Me, I'm the, uh, well, what you might call the commissioner for health. And in terms of health, we are working together with the uh, uh, countries and the individual um, um, uh, governments. We are looking at what they will do subsequently in terms of how the economy can be helped. If you remember, our approach to this has always been tied to what is internationally recognized and recommended by WHO. It was not a question of immediately closing our countries borders when this started, because that was not necessary. It was only those that are coming from high burden countries that we needed to ensure that we're, and it, now we are in a situation where there is containment, where we have to actually lock down, that's fine. But it will take some time and there is no question about it. When Ebola hit our region, it affected only three countries, maybe four if you include Nigeria. The impact, economic impact was huge. And so we do not deny that this uh, will, that has now affected 15 countries and we're working across 15 countries rather than just three hot countries. That in itself will have some economic impact. But as I said to you, 
my colleague, the Commissioner for Macroeconomics, is better suited to talk about the regional economic blueprint for well, recovery from this industry. Well, Prof, some Africans might want to argue that some of these countries that have not recorded in any case is because they don't have enough test kits uh, available. Uh, what is the race that is being, you know, how, how are we racing towards providing enough test kits and isolation centers so that we can curb this spread in, you know, in the meantime, in the immediate rather? You're, you're absolutely correct, but please, it is really important so that we can explain what is going on and don't put pressure on individual countries' testing facilities. It is not just a Africa. Africa is testing, and well, I can talk about West Africa. We are testing, and we are testing following the guidelines that are internationally accepted. And these guidelines are that if you are a suspect case, and what we call a suspect case, either somebody who already has symptoms and phones up, or somebody who is a contact and therefore is under isolation and monitoring, and then develop symptoms. It is not a question of testing the whole population. So please, that is important to put across, because I have seen people, particularly privileged people, everybody wanting to have a test, either because they have had a contact. That is not the approach, neither here nor across the world. The second thing is that we in West Africa, at the moment, thanks to what WAHO has done, thanks to what Africa CDC has also done, and thanks to the JAFMA Foundation uh, testing kits, across our countries, we have the confidence that at the moment, they have testing kits, and they are testing according to these criteria, and that they will right. not run out of testing kits. Right. However, however, having said that, we are procuring more. As I said to you, the uh, channels are now beginning to open up through China and other places, and we expect that in two to three weeks, we will have another batch of consignment of testing kits to distribute to our countries. Right, Director General, West Africa Health Organization, Professor Stanley Okolo, uh, your opinion is very crucial at this, uh, at this time. Thank you.